From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empey Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are Drs. Jack and Rexella Van Empey. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Empey Presents. Oh my, oh my, every week when we come into your home, I'm absolutely amazed at some of the headlines we share with you because we do go around the world with their headlines that perhaps you don't get locally. This first one, ancient prophecies motivate Islamic State militants. Wow, we're going to talk about those prophecies. I didn't even know that they had prophecies. Like Christians look at prophecies pointing to the return of the Lord. Then, Islamic State militants pose greatest threat to the United States. And then, Vladimir Putin's new Cold War. Many of us thought that that was the latest sign, but it certainly is not. And we will focus on that also. And I said to Jack, are you going to have some humor right up front on our program today? And he said, uh, yes, it's all about a couple that couldn't really have children. And he asked somebody to pray for them. Is that right, Jack? Their priest was visiting, and the lady said, oh, Father, we can't have children. Would you please pray that a miracle might happen? He said, I'm going to do it. And furthermore, I'm going to Rome. And I'm going to light a candle. It. We'll see what happens. Well, he came home and a year and a half passed, two years. He said, I'm going to see how the folks are doing. And he knocked on the door. She opened. And he said, did it work? She said, oh, Father, we've had two sets of twins. He said, wow. He said, let me congratulate your husband. She said, I can't get him for you because he took off her home to blow the candle out. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. think it's going to take more than that, don't you, Ann? <laughs> I think I understand where she's coming from there. Oh, Two please. Sets of <laughs> Two sets of twins. As I mentioned up front, friends, we as Christians believe the Bible. And we believe that God has given us some things to look for that we would call prophecies pointing to the return of our Lord. Well, now I've heard, and we're going to be showing you, prophecies that emerge where the Islamic religion also teaches that end times are coming. Here you see it. Ancient prophecies motivate Islamic State militants. My oh my now, that is a, a magazine, Dabiq. And uh, I tell you, uh, Jack's going to be elaborating a little bit more on that in just a moment. The apocalyptic prophecy fueling Islamic State militants. Did you know they have prophecies? I didn't know that until and this the one program. And the is getting them stirred up. All right. Apocalyptic prophecies drive both sides to Syrian battle for end of time. Did you wonder why they're having such conflicts? Hundreds of thousands of people across Assyria being murdered and killed. And oh my, what a terrible, terrible thing. And then Israel told, prepare for Armageddon. And forget U.S. help. I'm so sorry about that. We should give them all the help that they want. And then Pope Francis warns of World War III. And uh, here we are. I would like for you to see this. Jack, would you please like to read this for us? It's very dynamic. He, Mahdi, and that's their prophet, will reappear in the appointed day, and then he will fight against the forces of evil, lead a world revolution, and set up a new world order based on justice, righteousness, and virtue. Ultimately, the righteous will take the world administration in their hands, and Islam will be victorious over all the religions, and that is from the Islamic Seminary Publications, Karachi. My, oh, my. Uh, you know, I, I'm very puzzled because I did not know they had these prophecies, but something that they prophesied, I couldn't imagine. Now, we as Christians believe the Battle of Armageddon will be fought just outside of Jerusalem in the Valley of Megiddo. That's where it will ultimately culminate. Now, according to their prophecy, the Battle of Armageddon will be fought in Syria. 
I didn't know that, Jack, but that's mm -hmm. pretty that's pretty dynamic right now. Oh yes, Rexella. And they just captured this little place called the Beacon. They've named their magazine after that. And thirteen hundred and fifty years ago, Muhammad wrote Sunnas and Hadiths. And he prophesied that when they were in control of Dubik, that would be the time Armageddon begins. And that's a part of Syria. Now, here's another thing that the Jews and the Christians predicted. And that's from Isaiah 17:1. And this has to do with the capital of Syria. What a book. Written hundreds of years ago. It says, Damascus, the capital, shall become a heap of rubble and is beginning to look that way. So here are these prophecies. And then there is the Jewish and Christian prophecy of 2,700 years ago, Zechariah 14:2. I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and that's Armageddon. So all of these prophecies are coming true in all of our groups. Even Pope John Paul, as you'll see later. Yes, Jack. Now, you mentioned the Battle of Armageddon just outside of Jerusalem. There's not just going to be one invasion. There are going to be three invasions before it culminates to the dynamic conclusion of Armageddon. Jack, what are those three invasions? I'm going to get into this in depth later in the program, but I'll just name them now. The first invasion is Gog of Magog. Gog, Magog, Meshach, Tubal, and Rush, all cities in Rush, Russia today, and that's Ezekiel 38 and 39, that's the war of the latter years and the latter days, and they have an Arab federation with them, and you can find that in Daniel 11:40, and of course, also in Isaiah 17, 1, Ezekiel 38, 5 to 7, and Psalm 83, 5 to 7, and the whole reason is this, Psalm 83, 4, let us cast Israel off from being a nation, that their name be no more in remembrance. These things are really coming to pass right now. Then, because Russia fails, and that's Ezekiel 39, 1, 2, 12, and 13, China, Daniel 11, 44, comes from the east to help Russia for a second invasion. And these kings come from the east in Revelation 16, 12. It's the greatest battle in history as recorded in Revelation 9, 14, and 18. And I'll deal with that just a little later as well. You know, Jack, you've indicated to us by your statements there that the whole world would be involved in this battle. Well, that leads me to what Pope Francis said, warns of World War III. And in this article, they say war is caused not only by those who wage it directly, but also by those who do nothing to avoid it. You know, I believe that hitting the nail on the head right there. Very few nations are really trying to prevent this. World War III, Jack, Armageddon. I wrote a book on this subject, and we've moved thousands of copies, and it's on the final three popes. And Father McGrair was the Bishop of Ireland in 1139. And he went to Rome, and God gave him a vision of the day when Armageddon and Christ would come. And he started the countdown with Pope Celestine II, who lived at that time, and said, from this pope until we have many more and reach 113. When we do, that will be the Pope who rules during Armageddon and Christ's return to rule on this earth. Well, guess what? It was not Pope John Paul. He was 111. Pope Benedict, 112. Pope Francis, 113. What happens? Jesus comes. He cometh with clouds. Every eye shall see him, Revelation 1, 7. And he comes to put a stop to Armageddon, Revelation 11, 18. And the one ruling at that time was, would be 113, Pope Francis. No wonder he's talking about World War III. Mm, yes, Jack. Very, very plain there. Have you ever talked to somebody and they would say, oh, I like to be politically correct, politically correct. So often when someone says that, they forget what can happen? Take a look at what can happen when you're trying to be politically correct. Caliphate in Europe. Sweden cedes or gives over, hands over control of Muslim areas. Now this political correctness, the perils of multiculturalism 
and open borders have reached critical mass in Sweden. Do you know how many no-go zones they have there in that country of Sweden? 55. And they say, don't come here in these areas unless you are willing to obey Sharia law. Coming soon, America's own Islamic no-go zones. Now, we've talked about this before, and certainly we've got our problem. There are 30 here also, locations of major militant Islamic groups. And they say, don't come here unless you're willing to obey our law. The borders are closed. Can you imagine that in the United States of America? 30 locations, Jack. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, Baghdadi, who is causing all this trouble on the Middle East, is trying to become the caliph of the world. Now, a caliph is one who follows in the footsteps of Muhammad, who was a caliph who controlled much of the world. And a caliphate is the territory he controls. And now they're even trying to get another group, Baka Heron, in Nigeria to have another caliph. They want to control the world, ladies and gentlemen. Now, what shocks me is this. And the only reason that we are doing this again is because we've just gotten this latest news of what's going on in Sweden. The police went in. And they tried to cause a terrible thing from happening through a phone call they got. But there were 55 giants out there who said, you come in and we'll smash you to pieces. And the police had to get police to help them. And that's what happens. A no-go zone means you do not get in unless they let you in. And they adopt Sharia law, not the law of the land in which they're living, but their law. And you cannot change it. 55 areas of Sweden already, and they're saying it's spreading through Europe like wildfire. Even my background, Belgium, Antwerp, that little city already has 40% Muslims, and they're going to create some more of these no-go zones. Now, they say you must follow Sharia law in our zone, and we want to spread it to the world and finally take over everything. We want to show you this today. It's documented. But you know, there are people like the leader of Australia. Hmm. He said, Australia law, or get out if you don't like it. But we got too many chicken-livered human beings in some of these countries. They're afraid they might be put to death, and they might be. That's what's going on. And Sharia law, here's a book from converted Muslims who sent me this, and this is what they had to say. Ten reasons why Sharia is bad for all societies. One, Islam commands offensive, aggressive, and unjust jihad, which is a holy war. Two, Islam orders apostates to be killed. Three, Islam orders death for Muslims and death for non-Muslim critics of Muhammad and the Quran and even Sharia itself. Four, Islam orders unmarried fornicators to be whipped, put to death, and adulterers to be stoned. Five, Islam commands all homosexuals to be executed. Now, what do they get if they follow all of this? Get ready for a shot. A wonderful entrance into paradise and the virgins are available for the pleasure of all martyrs and righteous and holy men. What? Martyrs and righteous and holy men? And the martyrs are the ones who kill people and they get 72 virgins? First, they have voluptuous women of equal age, sir, 7831. Secondly, fair women with beautiful, big and lustrous eyes, sir, 4454. Maidens, chaste virgins, restraining their glances, whom no man has ever touched, sir, 5556. And you've got to be a holy man, a righteous man, and a murderer to get one of these virgins, 72 of them. You try that in our country and you'll end up in jail and then finally in hell. No adulterer gets to heaven. But they're going to kill everybody. You won't have to worry about same-sex marriage when they take over. Sharia law. Are we in trouble, Jack? Oh. Here in the United States. If we allow this to happen, friends, are we in trouble? I believe that we are, Jack. We're headed for that. Oh, yeah. I want to give you a word and then what it means. Anarchy. I looked it up, and it's a state of lawlessness, a rule of the jungle. Take a look at this headline. You'll see that word, friends. Take a look here. 
the Standard Magazine. Mere anarchy is loosed upon the world. My oh my, state of lawlessness. That's what it means. Jet Iman, Islam will take over the world in a decade. They're saying we can do this. Now we can do this in 10 years, take over the world. Now I have used this before, and uh, but it's so very, very relevant to what we're talking about right now. This is Ayatollah Khomeini. And I would like to read something that he had to say way back in 2011. Now, he is the supreme leader of the Islamic Revolution. Ayatollah Saeed Ali Khamenei announced that uprisings and movements in the Muslim countries serve as a prelude to greater developments and the rule of Islam over the world. It's progressing, friends. The whole world. Yes. Let's go on to this next gentleman. And Jack, would you like to read what he has to say, please? This is the man that heads up the Muslims of America and the man for whom Rick Warren preached twice. And they said, oh, he's telling him how Jesus saves. He'd have been dead in the morning if he tried. Here's what it's all about. And he is the chairman of the Islamic Supreme Council of America. We see the Mukti will lead a world revolution that will institute a new world order based on the religion of Islam. The Mukti will offer the religion of Islam to the Jews and Christians. If they accept it, they will be spared. Otherwise, they will be killed. Now, I've said it many times. This is the guy, the head man of America's, telling us what I've said so often. And Prophet Jesus will be the executioner under Mukti, and Islam will be victorious over all the religions. One world government, one world religion. It's coming. Well, you know, Jack, we've uh, spoken about uh, controlling the world. Now, does that mean a one world government like you're talking about, Jack? Do you believe that it could be on the horizon? Oh, Rex, well, there's no doubt about it. it Khomeini, not Khomeini, the original guy who is deposed from Iran and lived many years in Paris and then returned in 1979, got rid of the Shah, and he said, we're going to have a world order, a world government, a new world order. And if an atomic bomb kills most of the people of Iran, we'll accept it if we can rule over the whole world. And our people aren't listening. Our newscasters are saying nothing. But God really showed me something, Rexella. The Bible speaks about seven heads and ten horns for the final world order. And I'm not going to get into this because I've done it many times in a deep way, but I'm just going to go to the surface now. The seven heads. Daniel had a dream in Daniel chapter 2, verses 31 to 35. And he saw all these different things. And Revelation 17, 10 tells us what he saw. There are seven kings. Five are fallen, one is, and one is yet to come. Who are the seven? Now, get it. Number one. This is shocking. Assyria, and that's Genesis 2.14. Egypt, Genesis 12.10. Babylon, Daniel 1.1. 1, 1. Medo-Persia, Daniel 8.20. Grecia, or Greece, Daniel 8.21. Rome, Daniel 9.26. And revived Rome. Seven heads. Oh, Rex, well, there's no doubt about it. I see now. Four of those, the first four, are Muslims today. You think they're not going to have a part in this world order? Oh. And the European Union is part of the other group. Now, let me give you the ten horns for a minute. That's Daniel chapter 7, verses 7, 8, 20, 24, Revelation 12, 3, Revelation 13, 1, and Revelation chapter 17, verses 3, 7, 12, and 16. We have seven groups that have been trying to build this new world order, this one world government. And one of them is the Club of Rome, and they've put together a program to divide the whole world in the ten divisions. I've shown you some of these things, but it's so important to show it again tonight in the light of these new things they're creating, the no-go zones across the world. Jack, Read we've it. already got it. Yes. We've already got the 10 Division yep. World uh, Empire, and I have shown you this, but whoa, we got to put this on the screen once again. So you can see they have divided the world into 10 sections, America, Canada, Mexico, 
number one. Two, South America. Three, Australia and New Zealand. Then Western Europe. Four, Eastern Europe. Five, Japan. Six, South Asia. Seven, number eight, Central Asia. Number nine, North Africa and Middle East. And number 10, the remainder of Africa. Can you believe it's it? It's here. here. <laughs> yes. It's Rexel. And I'm going to tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we have a limited time. Jerome, who wrote the great Latin Vulgate, that great Catholic scholar, said, when we have a 10-division world empire, says it hundreds of years ago, that's the sign that our Jesus is about to return. Whoa. And he stops Armageddon when he returns, Revelation 11, 18. Man, get ready to meet the Lord, Catholics, Protestants. Get ready. It's that near. Oh, yes, Jack, get ready because the time seems so short before the coming of the Lord, and he's going to stop on him again. Now, friends, you see, and he, see, everything that we're offering to you today sort of builds toward World War III and Armageddon. Take a look here. Who else is involved? And no other than Vladimir Putin's new Cold War. And certainly he is uh, doing this. Well, buddies, Russian president and the president of China, they're becoming real buddies there. Well, look how they are coming together. The Air Forces of Russia and China completed the largest joint training exercise in their history on August 15th at a firing range in the Ural Mountains. Friends, do you see where this is going? Jack, would you sort of wind this all up for us? How it is pointing to World War III and Armageddon. When I started this program, I said there'd be three major invasions of the Holy Land. And I said, I'll get you the details at the end. Here it is. First of all, we see Russia coming, and that's Ezekiel 38, verses 1 and 2, Gog, Magog, Meshach, Tubal, all cities in Rosh, Russia, in the Greek, Russia, in English, and it's the war of the latter years and latter days, verses 8 and 16. In Ezekiel 39, we see Russia and all the Arab groups, the Islamic nations, have joined with her, and it's God coming to Israel's aid and five sixths of the armies fall and it takes seven solid months to bury them using every human being available to carry on these services and that's Ezekiel 39 verses 1 to 12 and 13 then the second phase is the Orientals coming down and they cross the Euphrates River where all the trouble is right now and that's Revelation 16 12 now the Battle of Armageddon is described in Revelation chapter 9 verses 14 to 18 loose the four demons in the great river Euphrates to slay a third part of mankind and the number of the army was 200,000 thousand 200 million and by these three was the third part of men killed fire smoke and brimstone atomic warfare and ladies and gentlemen, then there's the third invasion when all armies come against Jerusalem to battle, Zechariah 14.2. And Christ comes to stop it and put to help his people, Israel. And Israel is not going to lose because as Christ comes back, he gives them the victory. And he says in Isaiah 56.5, I'll give Israel an everlasting name. And he sets up his kingdom there in Israel on the throne of David right over Jerusalem, Luke 1, 32 and 33, and bless his heart, here's what happens. Jesus is the one who rules and reigns forever in this new world government, Philippians 2, 10, in the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in heaven, things on earth, and things under the earth, and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Oh, amen. Oh, don't be afraid when you read the newspapers. Oh, but thank God that it points to the coming of the Lord. But we need to be ready. Is he in your heart? That's the main thing. That's why he came. Will you please pray this prayer with Jack? Whosoever shall call upon the name of Jesus shall be saved. Simple. Let's do it. Jesus, I call on you, the Savior of the world, shedding that blood to wash me from every stain of sin. I repent. Come into my heart, Jesus. Cleanse me and save me. In your name I pray this. Amen. Amen. I trust that you prayed that prayer. And if you did, 
you're ready for heaven, forgiven of all your sins. I'd love to send you this little book of First Steps in a New Direction. Please let me know about it. There's my address. I'll get it in the mail as soon as I hear from you. Congratulations. You're a child of God now. And now, friends, whoa, remember, Christmas is coming up very soon, and what a great gift it is. Our offer of the week, so please take a look at our promo. Presenting the third edition of the Jack Vanopy Prophecy Bible, this beautiful burgundy leather-bound edition has been created exclusively for the friends of Jack Vanopy Ministries. Dr. Vanopy has highlighted all 10,385 prophetic verses and coded each passage in the margins so you'll know at a glance the event to which the prophecy refers. The Jack Vanopy Prophecy Bible King James Version features the words of Christ in red and includes the program Dr. Vanopy used to categorize and memorize over 15,000 verses of scripture. Also contained in the pages of this outstanding third edition are three books by Dr. Vanapi, Your Future, and A to Z Index to Prophecy, Revelation Revealed Verse by Verse, and Daniel Final End Time Mysteries Unsealed, also verse by verse. This special Bible would make a great gift for any occasion. Oh, friends, there's the 800 number. There's the address. Please make the call. What a beautiful gift to give for a birthday or for Christmas especially. And with your order. Jack, you want to say something about this little booklet? I've prepared this for you before when you read the 10,385 verses you had to read till you found them. Now it tells you exactly where to look and you can get the whole thing in one day if you do it. Oh yes, so please make the call. We'll get this in the mail right away. Here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive it. Chuck? Thank you, Rex Ella, my friend, to order the Jack Vanapie Prophecy Bible. Have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $59.95 to Jack Vanapie Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $59.95 to Jack Van Empey Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. Now back to Rex Seller. Thank you so very much, Chuck. There again is the 800 number, and there's the address, so please make the call. And of course, the prophetic verses of the Bible, a great convenient guide to all the prophecies in the Bible. Jack's done a beautiful job, so make the call a great gift for any occasion. I want to leave you with a poem. I haven't done this for a long, long time. What kind of church would my church be if all its members we're just like me. How very, very true. We need to be living for the Lord and looking for His coming. We'll look forward to being your home again next week. And until then, remember, God cares for you. So do we so very, very much. We love you and thank the Lord. Bye-bye.